calling this series Mental Makeover, Mental Makeover. And uh, man, I just believe that there's so many things that the scripture has to say about our minds and the way that we think. Anybody need some help with some of the things that we think? Come on, somebody. And so I know I do. And, 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 and really just kind of using this illustration that God, God will come in and he'll, he'll just kind of do some construction, just renovate some of the things that we have thought and, and continue to think. And when we place our thoughts on God's word, it changes maybe how we see others, ourselves, the way we see God. And, and so that's really where we're going over the next couple of weeks is we're saying, God, we want you to kind of transform the way that we think. And if you're anything uh, like me, you, you've had a, a couple nights where, you know, when your body starts to lay down, and it's time to go to bed, but your mind all of a sudden tries to catch up with the rest of the stuff for the day. Come on, somebody. You're, 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 you're like, all right, I'm, I'm going to go to sleep. And you're laying there and you're like, I have clothes in the wash that's supposed to go in the dryer. And you get back up, right? And you got to move them. Anybody, you just, you're running through so many things. And oftentimes it, it's because we're so distracted and so busy during the day that when our body begins to rest, the mind's like, hey, we haven't chatted all day, but here's some things I want to work out and some things that you've been thinking about that have been hidden. And, and Paul actually addresses some of these things in the book of Colossians. If you don't know who Paul is, he's a church planner, he's a leader. He wrote three quarters of the New Testament um, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So he wrote these letters to the church and he was writing to the church on how to live and how to walk out their newfound faith in Jesus. And so this, this book in Colossians is a great one. If, if you read the whole letter, it's, it's meant to be read all together. He, reads the, he writes this whole thing, and, and he's telling the church, hey, now that you've celebrated Easter, that Jesus rose from the dead, and maybe, maybe for some of us we've made that decision to make him Savior and Lord over our life, that if you've made that decision, hey, you live differently now. We think differently now. We, we behave differently now. Because we've put our faith and our hope in this person named Jesus and his spirit, his Holy Spirit, comes and lives inside of us and starts to change some things. Starts to find some freedom and discover some purposes and gifts that God has for us so that we can make a difference in this world. Well, he, he lays it out. He says, hey, we're going to think different. We're going to act different. Why? Because of Jesus, but this is what he writes in Colossians chapter 3. He says, If you then have been raised with Christ, if you've made that decision, if you've professed that, if you've given your life, listen to what he says. He says, Seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Now, to the Hebrew listener, they would understand that there is no more important, no more powerful seat than this one. So when he says, hey, you need to know Christ currently, actively, like in present tense, even for our day, Jesus is seated at the right hand of God with the most power, with the most authority. And then he says this, set your mind, set your mind, somebody say set it, on the things above, above. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. So Paul starts instructing the church. He says, hey, there's a whole lot of things to think about. Anybody realize that? You ever thought about what you think about? We think about a lot of things. But how often do we think about the things we think about? Here's a new thought. Think about what you think about because some of the things you think about, you should stop thinking about. You following it's like a Dr. Seuss book early in the morning. I hope you got your coffee. We are ready to go. But we got to think about what we think about. And Paul's saying, hey, think higher. Think higher. Oh, the world's going to have trouble. Oh, there's a lot of issues we have right now. But, but if the enemy can get you so focused on all of the earthly things, you will miss out on what God is trying to do with your life because we're so distracted by the things that are temporary instead of the things that God wants to do that have eternal impact. Eternal impact. So he says, hey, set your mind on the things above. If you're taking notes, you can write this thought down, this title. Think higher. Think 
higher. We're just going to elevate our thinking. And not just today, but all the weeks coming up, we're going to talk about this. We're going to think higher. What, what does it mean that God wants me to think different thoughts than what I think I already think? Well, I'm telling you, it's going to change. His word will change how you think. And when we, when we change how we think, we will change how we perceive things. We will look at our struggles differently. We will look at our relationships differently. We will look at people differently because there is a battle going for your mind. But we're going to think higher today. Say, think higher. Come on, let's pray together. Jesus, thank you. I pray that you would help us to think higher today. God, there's so many things we may have walked in. We may have been thinking and discussing even things walking in this room that we're trying to figure out and, 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 and either get through or solve or cope with or, or heal. Or, or God, there's so many things that are distracting and pulling on us. God, I pray that you would help us to think higher, think clearer, think beyond just the present circumstance or struggle or pretense. Help us to see what you see. Help us to go where you're going. Help us to think about things the way you think about things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Man, we're going to think higher today. And I love what Colossians says because it says, set your mind on things that are higher. We're just going to set our mind on things that are above. Um, I, I've created a habit. It started, I don't really know when it started, but I've created a habit uh, all growing up, teenage years, and even I'm, I'm about to be 34, even at 34 years old, I, I just created this habit that if something's in my hand and I'm like, what is this? I don't really like it. Why is it here? I just put it down somewhere. It's a habit. I just, I just, if, if I got, if, if like, if I'm holding my keys, I'm like, these, I don't want to hold these. Why do I have these? I just set it down. Whatever the nearest surface is, that's where it goes. I'll just put it down. I'll just walk away from it. I'm like, I'll come back for you later. I, I, I just have a habit of just setting things down in random places. One time I was playing football and I hadn't planned on being there very long. And so I was actually stopping by with a group that was playing. And so I, I, I got on the field. I was saying, what's up? And they're like, yo, you wanna, we're going to do a couple passes. I'm like, all right, cool. Well, my keys were bothering me. Uh, so I took them and I threw them like off to the side on the sideline. Well, what I didn't think would be long was a couple hours later. And we're playing and we're hanging out. And so I'm getting ready to leave. And, and I'm like, what did I do with my keys? Where did my keys go? And they're like, well, where'd you last have them? Don't you love it when people ask you that? <laughs> Spouses, come on. You're like, hey, have you seen my keys? Well, where'd you last have them? If I knew that answer to that question, I wouldn't have the first question. Because I would have went right to where I knew where I last had them, and I would grab them, and I would have my keys, right? And just, like, where'd you last have them? I'm like, I, I, in my pocket. It's not in my pocket. Did it fall out? And I'm like, no, I don't think so. So I have to walk back and kind of rehearse in my mind. What did I do with my keys? And then, and then I remember, I think I threw them on the side. So we got like all these dudes kind of walking the sideline of this field trying to, hey, I found the keys. It took forever to figure out where I had set down my keys. And here's what happens. Here's what I've learned. If we're not intentional about where we set things, we will accidentally set things everywhere. And so in my house, I'll, I'll be like, babe, have you, seen, have you seen my phone? She's like, no, where, where'd you last have it? I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's on a counter somewhere. My keys, my keys are on a counter somewhere. My wallet, I think, might be on the bathroom counter. My keys might have been on the kitchen counter. And, 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 and if my kids might have taken something, you know what I mean? That's the anomaly. But, but, but if we're not intentional with where we're setting things, we'll accidentally put things all over the place. And here's, here, here's what I'm learning. It's the same thing with our mind. If we're not intentional with how we think and what we think, our mind will go wherever it wants to go. It'll wander. It'll be in places it has no business being in. Why? Because I must pay attention to where I allow my mind to go. If we're going to talk about mental uh, health and we're going to talk about the mental makeover, I have to pay attention of where I allow my mind to go because some of us have lost our mind. Anybody? You're like, anybody seen my mind? Where'd you last have it? I don't really know. I think I left it in a Netflix episode last week. You ever, you ever driven home and not known how you got there? Come on. Some of y'all are brave enough to admit it. Others are like, is that safe? 
I'm a cautious driver. I'm not going to admit it. No, I always know where I'm going at all times. I'm mentally aware, right? But there, it's true. Our mind will wander someplace, and our body will just take us home. We'll pull in the driveway, and we'll be like, oh, my gosh. I can't believe I'm here. Your mind will click in and be like, we're home? You're like, I guess so. <laughs> Let's go inside. We made it. You know, like, that's a scary place to be when, when, when we didn't realize. Why? Because we don't think about what we think about. You just put the new T-Swizzle song on. You know what I mean? Like you just, you just jam it in your car and you've arrived. You're like, what in the world happened? How did I get here? Well, I'm telling you, when it comes to our mind, if we really, really, really want to think higher, ready? Here's the first one. We have to set my mind. I have to set my mind. I have to set it. Because Paul says in Colossians, if you then have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God and set your minds on things. Ready? Ready? Your mind may have started here, but we need to set our minds on things that are above. You ever set something on a shelf? My mind might have started here, but it doesn't need to stay there. Paul saying, no, no, no. Take your mind, take your thoughts, and set them on things that are above, not on the earth. Why? Because we have to set our minds. I got to set it. I got to set it. Why? Because if I don't set it, listen to me, something or someone will. So your mind is going to set itself, either intentionally or unintentionally. There's a, there's a movie. You ever laugh at a movie that's not funny? It's a serious movie. There's no humor in the movie. And it'll, it'll something will happen, and, and you, you're the only one in the movie theater laughing. Anybody? You know what I mean? Where are my people at? They're all online. Come on, somebody. <laughs> it's just like, are you just fine? So I, I, I was watching this movie, and I don't know why this scene makes me laugh. I quote this scene all the time. It's a very serious movie. It's also based on a true story, which makes laughing at it that much harder and, and worse. But uh, it's the movie Captain Phillips. And, and it's a story of these pirates that took this boat. But there's a scene. I don't know why it gets me every time. But the, the gentleman looks at Tom Hanks, who's, who's playing the captain, who's playing the character of the captain of the real person, because it wasn't actually Tom Hanks. Anyways, so... <laughs> He looks at Tom Hanks and he goes, I'm the captain now. That, may, that scene makes me laugh. I don't, I don't, I don't know if it was, the, I was like, what? I was, this, what? Like, like you just came in and you just took over and you're like, I'm the captain now. And here's, here, here's what I think we got to do with setting our minds. Because if Paul is saying, hey, you can set your mind, that means I have control over my mind. It doesn't have control over me. If I can set something, that means I have the ability to take it and move it and shape it and place it. Some of us need to tell some of the way that we think in our mental capacity, hey, you that's down there, I'm the captain now. And I'm going to place you above. You're going to start thinking some different thoughts. I'm the captain. I'm, I'm, I'm going to set higher the way I'm supposed to be living. And then in verse 9 and 10, this is what it says. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self. Paul goes on to say, he gives a long list, by the way, if you want to go back and kind of read the in-between. He gives the list of sexual morality and all these earthly things that maybe, maybe they feel good for a moment, but they're actually really bad for us. So they'll, they'll, they'll lie to you and say, oh, it's good. You're, you're, you're going to enjoy this. And on the back end, you're going to be like, this was, may have been enjoyable for a second, but this feels uh, rough now and because sin leads towards death. So he lists out all of these things that lead towards death. And he says, no, no, no. But, 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 but when our minds are in Christ, we can choose life. We think differently. We get life-giving thoughts. And he says, so don't lie to one another. Seeing that you have put off the old self, this, this, this verbiage in, in, the, in, in the Greek would have been like this, would have been like taking off old clothes and putting new ones on. It's like a change of clothes. So he's saying, because you've made a decision to follow Jesus, the old you, you just take it off. By the way, with its practices. What does that mean? My habits, my thoughts, 
what I believed, how I behaved. The day I said yes to Jesus was the day I said no to me. And so I said, well, I'm done trying to do all of my practices the way that I think I need to do them. And then he says this, put on your new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. So there's two things happening. At the day that I said yes to Jesus, I become new. But I'm still being renewed in my mind, in my knowledge of the image of my creator. So I am brand new, but I'm also being renewed. Why? That means there's some hard wiring in my brain that has taught me, well, this is how I grew up. Well, this is what we do. Well, this is how I respond to disrespect. I get loud and I start yelling because this is how we did it when I grew up. This is how we did it at home. Ain't nobody going to disrespect me. Well, Paul's saying, no, 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 no. We, we're being renewed. We're going to get new mindsets. We're going to get new thoughts. We're going to get new practices. But those are going to start happening as we become into the image of our creator. I, I used to be so angry, so angry. Like anything would set me off. Like a, somebody with like a quick merge, I'd be like, let's go. How dare you get in front of me? I am the captain now. I mean, I'd be like, are you, are, what are you, you blind? You know, like, I get so upset. You're lucky I got kids in my car, you know, like. I didn't have kids, but that's what I would tell myself. <laughs> but I'd get upset. I would get upset. And, and friends of mine would be like, bro, why you get mad all the time? And I'm like, oh, I don't really know. Well, sure, some of it had to do with a lot of unforgiveness towards my dad. Some of it had a lot to do with just, this is how I learned how to handle how to protect myself when I felt vulnerable and insecure. I would lash out irrationally just because I felt like that was more secure and safe than being vulnerable. Well, Paul's saying, we got to renew that because you may have been wired to think that that's the appropriate response, but I'm going to renew that into something new that's going to look like your creator the way you're supposed to respond to certain situations. I was already a follower of Jesus, y'all. I loved God. I was ready to throw down too. <laughs> and I, I, I was stuck between, I know I'm new, but I'm also being renewed. God's changing. He's formulating. He's, he's adapting some of these mindsets and habits. And it's because I had to set my mind. Just the other day, I was, I was sitting at Starbucks. There's a Starbucks here locally that I go to all the time. And uh, the, even the workers are in there, like, back in the office. And I'm like, back in the office, you know. And uh, I just got to know some of the staff. And I'll have meetings in there, and I'll prep in there. And, and there's all kinds of stuff that, that I'd just be hanging out in the Starbucks. Well, the other day, I'd been in there for a couple of hours. And I'd left Starbucks and come, come here to the building for a meeting with our team. And so I, I'd come in. I'm just kind of hanging. I'm waiting for the meeting to get started. And I'm like... I was wearing a hoodie because this Starbucks is the coldest Starbucks I've ever been in in my life. And I'm like, I smell like Starbucks. You know what I'm saying? Like I smell like a fresh roast right now. Like I don't even like the smell of coffee. I barely enjoy the taste. You know, like I got one coffee I like and it's filled with sugar. And so I call it coffee light, you know, like heavy on the sugar, coffee light. But, but, but I smelled like coffee. I was sitting, I'm like, I can, listen, I had changed my environment, but I still smelled like where I'd been set in. I had sat in that Starbucks for so long that the environment began to seep onto me before I even knew it. Why? Because where we set our mind shapes our mind. Where we set our mind shapes our mind. What are you telling me? Well, what I'm telling you is what you listen to and what you watch, who we hang with, what we talk about, what they talk about, all of it shapes us. Oh, man, we're about to get a list of what we can and cannot listen to. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to allow you to listen to what God tells you and how you need to navigate your life. But I will tell you that everything you listen to, everything you watch, and every person you sit next to is beginning to shape you. 
He's like, dude, why are you so angry? I'm like, I don't know, man. I'll just get angry. I figured it out. I figured I, I, one of the things for me, for me, God, why am I so angry? Well, it's because I grew up on Joy of M and Eminem. Anybody grow up on the Joy of M and Eminem? You know what I mean? A little bit of holy, a little bit of hood. Like I grew up, I, 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 I listened to all of it. You know what I mean? I'd be like, what a beautiful name it is. You only get one shot. Do not, you know, like I just... The playlist was wild. <laughs> and, 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 and just, seriously, God was just like, hey, pay attention to what you, you frequently listen to. And I started to notice, I'm a really aggressive, angry driver because of what I'm listening to in my car. No one had to, no one even knew. My mom didn't show up and be like, what you listen to? I'm like, Joy Fan, Mama, 91.5. No, 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 no. No one had to tell me. God, God was shaping me. God was renewing. That's what Paul's saying. He's like, God will renew you. He'll go, hey, I don't know if this is good for you right now. By the way, there are shows and TV and movies that for some ain't no, ain't no issue at all. But I, I, I've heard the Holy Spirit and just go, hey, hey, for, uh-uh. There ain't nothing wrong with it. It's actually kind of, it's, it's clean by worldly standards. Okay, cool. But, but, but it's, it's, it's creating depression and frustration on you. During COVID, I learned this really quick because, because I started to realize that where I set my mind shapes my mind. And, 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 and I was stuck because this, this could shape my mind. But ready? But, but so could this. You know how many Instagram handles I had to unfollow during COVID? Not because they're bad people, not because they have issues, ready? But because I just couldn't handle all the negativity. I couldn't, I, I found myself just closing in. And, and my wife's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I don't know, I just feel like sad and depressed. And we don't even watch the news. You know, I was just getting it through here. That was, that was kind of a joke, but <laughs> I get it through there. Why? Because where we set our mind matters. Where, where we set our mind shapes, shapes our mind. Where Paul says, make sure you set your mind on things that are above. Because wherever you set your mind will filter everything else that comes to your mind. So whatever my mind is set on is feeding me. It's shaping me. It's molding me. Where you set your mind shapes your mind. But here, here's the trick. Paul says, make sure you set your mind on things above. Woo! We did it. Well, if we want to think higher, here, we got to set our mind. But here, here's the second one. I got to keep my mind. I got to keep my mind. Can't just set it. I got to keep it. Well, what are you saying? We're going to read this verse in Isaiah 26, verse 3. It says, you will keep, somebody say keep, in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. You will keep, God will keep you in perfect peace. Now, in the Hebrew, the perfect peace is shalom, shalom. Anytime it's repeated twice, it was an emphasis of a word. It's, and, and so God is saying, hey, you want shalom, shalom? You want like peace, peace? Not just regular peace. Not a peace that is, that is surrounded by circumstance. Not a peace that you only have when things are going well. If you want a perfect peace that if all hell broke loose or heaven was returning, I still have my peace. Oh, God has that for those whose minds are steadfast. What does steadfast mean? Anchored, immovable, planted, rooted. And why is it planted and rooted and steadfast? Because they trust God. Because they trust God. We just sang it. I trust in God. Right? We, we, we just sang that verse. But how many people know it's easier to sing sometimes than it is to actually believe? I trust God. But you're praying for a child. I trust God. But the budget don't make sense. I trust God. 
But our relationships are unhealthy and out of whack and all we want is a friend or a boo or whatever. We're st- I trust God, but, but, but my life isn't planning out how I thought it was going to play. I, tr- I, tr- I trust God. Well, yeah, because it's not just about setting our mind. It says that he will keep our mind in, our, in that peace when, when they're steadfast, when they're, when, when, when they're anchored, when they're, when they're submitted, when it's, when it's like, no, 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 I'm going to run everything that comes through my mind through this filter instead of this filter. There's a whole lot of filters on Instagram. But there are also things that we filter our thoughts, our life through. Some of us just want the picture to look good and <laughs> get everything right. We get the right filter with the right position, with the right photo angle so we can make that post. Well, God's, God's saying, hey, I, I want you to filter your life through my word and watch how when you're steadfast and you trust in me, how you will have peace regardless of your circumstance. You know, to keep my mind. To keep my mind. Well, well, why do I have to keep my mind? Because something will try to move your mind. My wife, she's orderly. A couple weeks ago, I talked about how clean she was. She said, don't say clean, use the word orderly. She's like, they're going to think we got a clean, clean house. You know what I mean? I'm like, all right, all right, orderly. It's an organized house. And she's just orderly. And so when, when, when something is out of place for longer than 10 minutes, it's back in where it's supposed to be, you know. And, and so oftentimes I would find things that I had laying around uh, for a long period of time no longer where I had previously left them. Anybody? And Okay, so... <laughs> I'll be like, I thought I had. Now, here, here's the conundrum in my house because I'm the guy who sets things and then forgets where I put them. And she's the one who order, reorganizes and forgets that she did it. And so it's a, it's a scavenger hunt in my house at any given day. I'm all not at home. Like, did you move them? I don't think so. I'm like, did I put it? I don't know. Ready or not, here we come. Like, everyone go figure out where dad's keys went. Well, just this week, I'm looking for a book. And I'm like, I had this book on, on, on the counter right here. It's not where it goes, but it's where I had it. And, and so I'm like, babe, have, have, you seen, have you seen this book? I had this book on the counter. And she's like, I don't think so. I'm like, I'm like 99.9%. Always give yourself that 0.1 uh, positive that I left it there. Are you sure? She's like, no, I haven't seen it. And I'm like, I bet she organized it. And so I know her well and... We learned early in our marriage, this can't be stuff we argue about. We just laugh. So, because if not, you're like, where's my book? Like, it's not that. It's like, who finds it first? You know, like, much healthier marriage when you deal with it that way. And uh, I'm like, it's hide and seek with my, so, so I start thinking like, okay, my, my wife would have organized it. And I remembered, so I went to some different areas. I had books. I went to some, some drawers she might throw it in. And then I remembered I have a, I have a drawer in my room that has all these books I haven't read yet. And, uh, <laughs> or maybe don't want to read. I'm not sure, but it's just like a collection of books there. So I went in, I'm looking, I didn't see it. I'm kind of going through the book. I, I find it. So I'm like, babe, I, I found the book. I, I had set it here but something else had come and taken it and reset it somewhere else. So listen to me. The reason why we have to keep our mind is because you will set your mind here. But a bad work day will reset your mind. You you might have a desire to set your mind here, but, but somebody who caused you trauma comes back into your life and they reset where your mind would go. So it's not just enough, ready, to set it and forget it. I made a decision to follow Jesus, we're good. My mind's good. No, 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 no. The world, Instagram, relationships, your boss, your spouse said something sideways that hit a traumatic event from your childhood that they don't even know about and you can't even really reconcile in your own mind and heart as to why you feel some sort of way that all of a sudden got you responding with how you used to respond instead of how God says we should respond and you're like, I don't really know how I got here and I don't know how to get out of here again. Thank God for counseling. So we 
We can't just set our mind. We've got to keep our mind because my mind will stay on what I trust in. It's going to stay on what I trust in. That's why Isaiah says that when we trust in him, we have this steadfastness that locks into what God is doing and building in our life. Why? When we trust him, it stays on him. And so, yeah, it may not look how we thought it was going to go, but it could be hard right now. It could be difficult. We could be going through some stuff. The world is not always nice to me, okay? But Jesus said, I have overcome the world. Take heart. You will have trouble. But I have overcome the world. And so, and so yeah, there's, there's plenty of opportunities to be anxious and frustrated. And I don't know what's going to happen in the future. And this is not how I thought this was going to pan out. But then, but then Philippians says, no, 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 take every anxious thought and submit it to the Lord. Because he who will hold you in perfect peace and understanding with thanksgiving and supplication. Well, then. In order to keep my mind where it's supposed to be set, I got to know the foundation that it's set upon. Because the world will constantly, people will constantly, situations will constantly try to pull your mind down to bottom shelf thinking. But when we give our life to Jesus, we get some new minds, we get some new mindsets, we get some top shelf type of thinking. So I'm going to set my mind and I'm going to keep my mind Because where you set your mind will protect your mind. Why do we have to keep it here? Because where you set your mind will protect your mind. Have you ever heard of a fixed mindset? Somebody that just, I'm, I know, I already, I already know. I already, I already, I already, I believe this. I, 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 a fixed mindset comes because we've, we've dug in our, it's like a three-year-old at Target and they know the toy they want already. You know, they dig them heels in. But, but if we set our mind on these lower level thinking, that lower level thinking will try to protect you and keep you. But if we understand that we have a God whose ways are higher than our ways, whose thoughts are higher than our thoughts, that when we lean into his word, it begins to transform how we think and how I feel. All of a sudden, it begins to change me from the inside out because the foundation of what it's set upon and what I keep it on is what protects it. Because here's the last one, if we want to think higher. Set my mind, keep my mind, and I have to pay attention to what guides my mind. What guides my mind? There's a verse in Romans chapter 6, or chapter 8 says this. It says, those who live according to their flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. It has, it has their mind set on what the flesh desires. That means I think and I react and I respond to what I feel and what I desire and what I want. And when I'm hungry, I eat and, 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 and my desires begin to lead me. But those who live in accordance with the spirit, no, no, they have their mind set, mindset, minds set on what the Spirit desires, and so they anchor themselves into something different because what the Spirit desires, the mind governed by the flesh, by the way, leads to death, but the mind, when it's governed, guided, led by the Spirit, it leads to life and peace. We got to know what guides us, what directs us, what shapes us. Because Paul is saying there's, there's, there's these desires that, that we can totally let guide and place and set and keep our mind. But the Spirit of God will come and he will guide and set and place. Why? Because he is so determined to get you to the destination that he has for you. What's the best GPS? Apple? Waze? Front row likes Google? What's the best one? What's the best GPS? I have friends that will throw down on this argument. It's like Android and iPhone. There's no competition. It's iPhone. But, but, but in the map world, in the map world, it's up for grabs. So you have Waze, you have Google, 
you have Apple Maps and and there's these conversations and well, regardless, whichever app you've ever used, I could tell you which one frustrated you. The one that said, you've arrived and you're not there. You're like, I've not arrived. This is not Pizza Palace. This is the back alley of some random warehouse. And now I'm confused and slightly frustrated and hangry. We're gonna deal with that later on how our mind deals with hangry. But when you, are, when, when you arrive to somewhere that you're not supposed to be and the GPS says you've arrived, that's frustrating. And what Paul is saying is there are things that look good but they lead towards the destination of death. But when we're guided by his spirit, it brings us to the destination of life. But the roads to get there, you're going to drive through some neighborhoods. And you're like, I did not know we were going through here. I did not know. I, wh- where, is this, where is this GPS taking us? I don't know where the Holy Spirit's taking us. I just know it leads towards life and it leads towards his goodness, and it leads towards, I just know we might be in a bad situation now, but this isn't the destination, this is the pass through. When his spirit's leading, when his spirit's guiding, I might have some mental stuff right now, but this is not the destination. My God will lead me through, he will carry me forward. I am not stuck on chapter six, he's still writing. I'm setting my mind on higher things. Why, 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 why? Because the most important thing of how this mind moves in this entire message has been my hand. Because what guides my mind will set my mind. Full circle. Be aware of where I set my mind. Make sure I keep my mind. But the guide to how we think is either going to be what I desire or his spirit. And I'm going to be pulled into lower level thinking. But thank God, I can say, Lord, I don't know what I've been thinking or where I've been going or how I even got here. But I'm giving to you today my thoughts, my desires, my frustrations. Lead me, show me, reveal to me areas that I have not trusted you so I can trust you again. Show me where I'm being deceived so I can rid myself of those things and follow where you are calling me to go. We need a GPS. We need a hand, we need God's hand on our life, not my hand, God's hand to guide us and direct us. And over the next few weeks, we're gonna take some practical steps of what's happening up here in the hard wiring of our brain. But this week, I wanna leave us with a couple questions. Just some questions to consider, to think about, to think about what you think about. Here's the first one. What guides or what and who shapes my thinking the most? What and who shapes my thinking the most? By the way, God's word can shape and mold our minds, but something else can too. And I want to encourage you, something is shaping and molding your mind the most. So just be thinking, what shapes and molds my mind the most? Right here's the second one. What and who tries to pull my thinking down again? Where do I find myself anxious again? Where do I find myself frustrated again? What, 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 what inlets are creating an outcome that I know is not healthy for me? And here's the third one. Do my thoughts align more with my own desires or God's desires? Are we thinking all about me? Or am I thinking all about what God would have me to do? Am I thinking all about my frustrations and my worries and my troubles? Or does the Holy Spirit have room to say, hey, there's somebody I want you to encourage today. There's somebody I want you to strengthen today. Paul says, hey, we got to get out of the bottom shelf thinking and come up to the top shelf thinking. Can we pray? Every head bowed, every eye closed. I just want to pray over the room. I believe God can use moments like this that are supernatural and Before we even continue to take steps and the mental makeover, the main thing right now is the fact that in order for our minds to be renewed and to be changed, I have to surrender my life, my mind over to him. And so I'd just like to give an opportunity for anybody online or in this room that hasn't yet made the decision, or maybe you need to remake a decision you've made before to say, yes, today I want to give my life to Jesus. Renew me from the inside out. If that's you, just put your hand up and put it right back down right now. One, two, three. Anybody in this room, I see those hands. Anybody online? 
I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And the Bible says that when we confess with our mouths and believe in our heart, we would be saved. And it's the belief that matters, but we're going to confess out loud. I believe that when we say out loud, our ears can hear the confirmation of what we're choosing today. We're going to pray this all together, but for some of us for the first time, I want you to just pray this with me. Say, Jesus, I give you my life today. I believe that you died on the cross and you rose from the grave so that I could be made new. And so I give you my life, my mind, my troubles, my future, my past. And I ask you to make me new. I believe you rose from the grave so that I could be new. And today, I know that you'll save me and I choose to follow you with the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you for watching our Grow Life Church YouTube channel. Our hope is always to help you better connect to all that God has for you. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a thing. Fill out a digital connect card so that we can stay connected with everything that's happening in and through our community. You can also support the mission by giving online as we continue to bring people into a growing relationship with Jesus. Thank you again for watching. We hope to see you soon.